Apple has released not one, but two new iPhones, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus. Keep watching to find out which, if either, is the right mobile for you. The 4.7 inch iPhone 6 and 5.5 inch iPhone 6 Plus are both larger than any iPhone released before. And for iPhone fans, that step up in size is likely to take some getting used to. We've praised past iPhones for how easy they were to use in one hand, but that might not be the case this time around. Apple has followed in the steps of Samsung and LG by opting to make a bigger phone that means you can see more on the screen. However, this means it's a struggle to use the iPhone 6 one-handed, even for me, and all but impossible to use the iPhone 6 Plus comfortably. And anybody with smaller hands than me would likely struggle with either of them. Apple has introduced what it calls reachability to provide a possible solution. This lets you slide the top half of the screen down the display by double tapping the home button. It works, but it looks less than elegant in practice. One design feature in the iPhone 6 favour, however, is the curved body that fits more snugly in your hands than the rather sharp edge iPhone 5S ever did. Its higher resolution Retina HD displays are flawless though and bear up remarkably well to close scrutiny. The screens are also easier to see in bright light thanks to the addition of a polarised layer. You might also ask what Apple has done with the extra screen space when it comes to your apps and home screen, but as of yet, the answer is strangely little. The iPhone 6 Plus will now let you view your home screen in landscape mode as well as portrait and you can view more app icons on that one screen. Typing on the iPhone screen is improved though. I've never got on with the small screen keyboard of the previous 4 inch iPhones and the extra screen real estate on the iPhone 6 means I hit the keys with much more accuracy than I did before. The new camera promises to mark a new high point for iPhone cameras too and perhaps the smartphone industry as a whole. I can't wait to see the results of our lab testing to see how the iPhone 6's camera compares against its closest Android rivals. Every picture I've taken so far has been perfectly focused and captured in a fraction of a second. Images are bright, crisp and colourful and look great when displayed on the iPhone 6 itself. The HD video camera shoots video as well as any smartphone I've used too and I can't wait to use the 240 frames per second slow motion effect while I'm out and about. In fact, the only real bad thing I can say about the camera is the design of the unit itself. It protrudes oddly from the frame of the phone to the extent that I feel like I'm in danger of accidentally damaging it. Hopefully Apple put plenty of resources into reinforcing it during its design stages though. The 64-bit A8 processor is so quick that apps open in an instant and there's never any noticeable lag when shifting between home screens. That said, it doesn't really offer massive improvements over the already very quick iPhone 5S. In everyday use, it's just as fast and just as responsive, which is no bad thing. One area where the iPhone 5S could be criticised was its battery life, but the iPhone 5 6 promises to give this an all important boost. But I'll have to wait until we get our lab test results to see how much of an improvement the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus offer. So far though, I have found the battery to last for a full working day without charge. There can be no denying that the iPhone 6 is a great phone, with the iPhone 5S receiving a drop in price and the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the LG G3 being good phones in their own right, I'd strongly suggest considering your options before you buy. In fact, why not give it two weeks, by which time we'll be publishing a comprehensive review based on our stringent lab tests so you can see exactly how good the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus really are.